five, four, three, two, one. Now, now I'm right on time. Well, actually, you're early. You said five o'clock. It's exactly five o'clock. I know, but we really don't have to leave for the airport till 5.15. Aha. So you said five o'clock because you know I'm always late. And if it were now 5.15, you would have been very clever. Something like that. Uh-huh. Yes, you see, but I knew that. Oh, really? Then how come you're here? So you'll owe me. What? You owe me 15 minutes, right? Right. And I'm going to keep picking up 15 minutes until the day we're supposed to get married, and then you'll owe me a couple of hours, and when you're waiting for me at the church, you won't be able to say a thing. I'll cry. And I'll be on time. Hi. <laughs> uh, you ready? Yeah. Car's outside. Oh, good. Taking your bedroom furniture? One, two, three. Four. I didn't pack one thing that wasn't absolutely necessary. Honey, the play only runs for a week. I know, I know. And normally, this part would just be a two-bag job. But since it's in your hometown, it's turned into a six-bag job. I don't understand that. Well, Donald, I'm going to be meeting all of your friends and relatives, and I want your parents to say, Anne, you haven't changed. Not Anne, you haven't changed. Honey, my parents, my friends, and my relatives, in fact, the entire population of St. Louis would love you if you... Uh, I was going to say if you weren't wearing anything, but I'm not going to say that. Donald, do you think your family will like me and accept me? Honey, what does a family want for their son? A girl who's warm, sensitive, understanding, lovable, and beautiful. Oh, Donald, am I that girl? <laughs> No, Donald, if your mother's anything like mine, she'll have enough food for an army the minute we walk in the door. Yeah, I guess you're right. Looks pretty good. I'm so nervous. Honey, you'll be great in the show. Oh, Donald, I'm not worried about the play. I'm nervous about being in St. Louis and meeting all your family and friends and passing inspection. Honey, there won't be any inspection and you'll pass it easily. <laughs> what about your great Aunt Belle? No problem. You said yourself she's the tough one. Honey, my great aunt Belle is an old lady who traditionally has had something to say about every kind of family business, but we just humor her. Your cousin Danny sure didn't find any humor in her. Well, he was really engaged to a dummy anyway. It's a good thing Aunt Belle talked him out of it. I like the way she said it, though. You're really engaged to a dummy, Danny. <laughs> Honey, believe me, she'll love you. I don't know. Hmm? She'll love you. They'll love you. I've only had dinner with you once, and I love you. <laughs> it's the first time she's met all the family since we've been engaged. Oh, well, the trick, young lady, is to ask his mother for the recipe of every dish she serves. That's what my wife did. Really? And it worked? 23 years, and she never had an in-law problem. Oh, that's fantastic. And I've never had a decent meal. <laughs> Excuse me. There you go. You see, you charmed him. If you can charm a crazy person like that, you can certainly charm Aunt Belle. What makes him such a crazy person? He ate his broccoli and left his ice cream. Well, Donald, don't say broccoli, ice cream, or food. You're hungry too? Starving. Well, honey, let me order you something to eat. Oh, Donald, for heaven's sake, your mother's probably been cooking all day. The least we can do is wait another hour. Never should have worn this outfit. You look great. Your mother's not gonna like it. Why won't she like it? Well, because it's it's not in the middle. I should have worn something in the middle. Of what? Of length. Well, I couldn't wear a mini. You know, I couldn't wear a mini. I didn't know that. Oh, you knew that. I, I figured I'd, I'd wear the midi. 
But she may think I look too old. You know, if she doesn't know the style, she could think this is old-fashioned. Oh, honey. I should have worn a nurse's uniform. <laughs> It's a taxi. It's them. Oh, it's Donald. Oh, Bert. Oh, Bert. He's he's going around to open the door for her. She couldn't open the door for herself. <laughs> she looks very nice. She's wearing an old-fashioned coat. But I'll make a deal with you. You stop the play-by-play, -play and I'll go upstairs and get my shoes. <laughs> Unless you want me to, somebody better come up with 485. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, here, this here you is go. Oh, so you finally got here. Hi, Pops. <laughs> Hello, Hi, Mr. I am. Holland, how are you? Hi, oh, son. An engagement present you shouldn't have. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to fill them. <laughs> how was the trip? Well, aside from a little turbulence, we were claiming our bags. It was perfect. They lost my bag. Oh, Donald. Oh, Mom, now don't worry. They said they'd get it back to me tonight. They're going to phone later. Thank goodness I didn't lose one of mine, too. <laughs> how would you know? Uh, hold it. I smell something fantastic. You know, he smelled something fantastic even as a baby. I think it was the talcum powder. <laughs> Pop, you're getting funny in your old age. What is that, Mom? Swiss steak. Oh, you're kidding. Swiss steak is one of my favorites. Bert's, too. He just finished it all. <laughs> but what did they serve you on the plane? What did they serve? Uh, well, they served a, a huge meal with uh, broccoli and ice cream. <laughs> Good. Yes, yes, it was. But not as good as your Swiss steak, I'll bet. Or even any of your leftover potatoes, if you have any. Oh, you're sweet. You must really give me a recipe for that Swiss steak, Mrs. Hollinger. It smells terrific. <laughs> Dabney's frozen dinners. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Hey, uh, by the way, Don, we've invited some people over for later on. Oh, great, Pop. Good. Yeah, I asked all your old friends to step in and meet Anne this evening. Oh, that's very nice. Around 9 o'clock. Uh, it'll give you a chance to get a little rest. Oh, good, thank you. Oh, Don, uh, why don't you take Anne's bags upstairs? She'll be using your old room, and you can use the uh, guest room. Oh, no, for heaven's sakes. I'm the guest. I don't want to take Donald's room. Guest room is one of those phrases for some space over the garage, which I love, and which you wouldn't be nearly as comfortable in as my old room. Are you sure? Positive. Let's sit down, Anne. <laughs> Thank you. Is uh, Aunt Belle coming tonight? Nope. Oh. We are taking her to the opening of your play Monday. She likes plays. Our tickets are in the fourth row. Center? Yes, yeah, center, left side, right side, and on both aisles. You brought the whole row? Well, the cousins alone take up most of the seats. Yes, and on Wednesday night, my lodge bought a whole section, and we're selling the tickets for our theater charity event. You're going twice? Him twice. Oh. Oh, I would have gone Wednesday also, Anne, but I, um, I really never miss the 7 o'clock news. And uh, since I'm giving it up Monday... Oh, oh, well, sure. I mean, my goodness. I think a 75-cent tip would be perfectly in order. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> I don't know what it is. As soon as he takes off his shoes, he's Bob Hope. Come on, honey, I'll show you. Oh, fine. Excuse me. Now, you get some rest, Anne, and come down whenever you want. And you come right down, Donald. She obviously needs her rest. Yeah, well, if you hear any screams, Mom, you better come up right away. Yeah, well, your son's in trouble, he screams. <laughs> <laughs> Mildred, I like her. She's a lucky girl. Your mother doesn't like me. I like you. That's the thing that counts. 
Then she doesn't like me. I didn't say that. Well, you said I like you with the I underlined. That means you like me, but she doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't mean that at all. She couldn't help but like you. And besides, you're not supposed to like me. You're supposed to love me. You're right. I love you. She likes you. She could love me, too. Right again. I love you. She loves you. The man in the plane loves you. The cab driver loves you. <laughs> Where did you get those? I'm starving. You know those little dishes that everybody always asks whether it's a candy dish or an ashtray? Yeah. Well, the one downstairs that was a candy dish is now an ashtray. <laughs> oh, you don't finish these. I'm too nervous to eat. Honey, honey, please, come on now. Stop it. Oh, Donald, most girls who meet their future families are judged just on what they're like. That's right. Well, I'm going to be judged on how good an actress I am, too. Oh, honey. It was not one of my brighter moves taking this job. Honey, please, please, do me a favor. Don't worry about anything, okay? Okay. Donald. What? Close your eyes. Closed. What am I holding? What are you... I knew this trip was a mistake. You should never let the girl you're going to marry go through your closet and find Baba. <laughs> Baba? Yeah, Baba. Baba is a perfectly acceptable name for a person like that. Well, that room over the garage sounds pretty scary. You better take him with you. You, you think I needed Baba to fall asleep? Is that it? Like Linus's blanket or something? Guys don't do those things. Okay, once in a while if there was thunder. Or if I happened to go to sleep when it was dark out. Or if it was rainy. Or if I couldn't find Fuzzy. Fuzzy? My rabbit. Oh, I see. But after college, I got along without them. Oh, I'm awfully glad to hear that. Oh, Donald. I think it's nice that you were a little boy. I think it's nice that you were a little girl, too. That way you grew up soft. <laughs> oh, Donald, you don't have to worry about your lost suitcase. You can always wear uh, this. That would be a mistake. Hmm. <laughs> little skimpy. You must have shrunk. Yeah, well, wool's like that. The more you eat, the more it shrinks. <laughs> and why would it be a mistake? You see this letter? This letter made me a very big man down at the malt shop, and women were known to go berserk just looking at it. I'll take my chances. <laughs> Maybe it was the malt that did it to them. <laughs> oh, Donald, I wish I'd known you when you were in high school. I was voted class cute. We could have gone to all those things, you know, like the varsity dinner. Uh, sorry about that. I took Janet Booth. Ooh, that name came back awfully fast. Well, I, it, it sure did, didn't it? <laughs> what, wait a minute. Here, I want to show you something. Which one was me? Oh, uh, that one. You knew that was me? Somebody told you. I got a secret letter in the mail that said Donald is fourth from the left. How could you tell that one was me? It looks like you. That looks like me? That doesn't look like me. Well, you're holding Baba. <laughs> Honey, does that look like me? Tell me about Janet Booth. Oh, she's a lovely girl. I always like Janet. Uh, hi, Mom. Uh, hi, dear. Uh, shouldn't you be letting Ann get her rest? Oh, no. Mom, Mom, does that look like me? Oh, wasn't he a beautiful little boy? Yes, he was, but he's more handsome now. Did the airline call? Uh, not yet. Oh, Mrs. Hollinger, thank you for the flowers. They're lovely. Oh, I'm so glad you like them. They're favorites of mine. Oh, good thing you carry this instead of packing it. <laughs> oh, by the way, you'll be meeting Janet tonight. She's coming to the party. Oh. <laughs> Made me a very happy man. Me? Sure, now I'm the most eligible bachelor in the group. <laughs> also, the only bachelor. <laughs> and, and I want you to meet the Parkers. Oh, I'd love to. Come Excuse on, us, Bert. Boy, she sure is a looker, Bert. Is she nice? Well, of course she's nice. <laughs> Your Donald can really pick them up. Actress, huh? And that's right. Say, has she ever been in any of those shows in. Uh, you know, uh, Calcutta? Harry. <laughs> Well, that's where it's at. Oh, well, I'll uh, bring her over and you can ask her yourself. Harry, if you say one word. Oh, that's all right. Since she got out of prison, things like that just don't bother me. Prison? Yeah. It's 
Something to do with her first husband. <laughs> Pardon me. Donnie practically lived at our house. Oh, that's nice. How is Margie, by the way? That's not nice. Well, she has four children now. That's nice. And we're going to see you in the play The Queen of Diamonds, right? That's right. And what part do you play? I play Megan, the Queen's sister. That's the uh, second biggest part. Well, you keep practicing. You'll make it. <laughs> oh, more guests. Uh, but Mom, that's all right. I'll, I'll get it. Come on, honey. Excuse us, please. It was Thank nice you. to have met oh. you. Thanks. <laughs> Oh, hi, Janet. I'm glad you could come. Wouldn't miss it for anything. As a matter of fact, I would give anything to miss it if I could miss it someplace with you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, Janet, uh, this is Anne Marie. Anne, honey, this is Janet Booth. Hi. You're much prettier than your picture. <laughs> it was in the paper. Oh, about the play. Oh, yes, of course. It's big news when a New York actress comes to St. Louis. <laughs> well, Janet was quite an actress herself. We did a review in college together. She, she was she was terrific. Oh, he's prejudiced. He was in love with me at the time. Oh. But I gave up any thoughts of becoming an actress to concentrate on being a woman. How's it coming? I'm going to steal you away for a couple of minutes. Want you to meet some of the other guys? Oh, sure. I... I still drink gin. Oh, uh, sure, sure, uh, Janet. The bar's this way. I never thought that wild man had settled down. Now, how'd you get him to propose? Kill me, for heaven's sakes. Well, actually, I played it very cool. I knew he was going to ask me to marry him, so I played hard to get. I waited until he said, will you, before I said, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> With us, it was the old down-on-one-knee thing. Oh, how romantic. Yeah. She really looked silly that way. Oh, they're all such big shots after you've got them, aren't they? <laughs> There's Dave. Come on, Ann. I want you to meet him. You. Huh? Oh, nice talking to you. Oh, Dave. See you later. Say hello to Dave while I say hello to the bartender. <laughs> hello, Dave. Hi, Ann. This must be pretty dull for you. I mean, your life is so terrific, all that, all that show business stuff. Oh, no, believe me, it's not that glamorous. You know Ed Sullivan? Ed Sullivan? No. Oh, he's some guy. I gotta tell you the wildest thing. I mean, you'd be interested in this because you're in that field. Oh, sure. Oh, Linda and I spent our fifth wedding anniversary in New York City. She had never been there before, and, uh, well, I thought she'd get a big kick out of it, you know? I mean, I took her to all the great places. Uh, Radio City Music Hall. Terrific show. Nothing like in St. Louis. I guess you go there all the time, huh? And? Where? Uh, Radio City Music Hall. Oh, oh, yes. Yeah. yeah, I live in New York. Well, anyway, the second night we went to this terrific little restaurant, I read about it in our tour book. Uh. Who do you think is sitting the next table? <laughs> Anne? Uh, next table? Ed Sullivan. Oh, Don tell you this? Oh, no, I, you know, I just figured, because since you said before that, you know... Oh, so. yeah. Well, anyway, Linda's a little shy. So I figured I'd get up, and he'd get a kick out of being recognized, so I walked up over to him. Yeah, yes, y yes, Aunt Val, yes. Yes, she's attractive in that theatrical sort of way. Well, the rest you'll have to judge for yourself tomorrow night. No, 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 I haven't said a word to Don about it. He just told me she's free tomorrow night. Yes, yes, fine, fine, goodbye. Why does Belle have to have a surprise party? Why couldn't she have come here tonight? Because tonight she's sitting for Maxine, and besides, she likes to catch people off their guard. You know something, Mildred? I'll bet if she'd have caught us off our guard, we'd never have gotten married. Now, Mildred, word to Don or Ann now. All we have to do is ruin Aunt Belle's surprise tomorrow night, and I wouldn't want to be Ann for all the tea in Kansas. <laughs> I walked up to him and I said, Ready to be <laughs> Hi, Dave. How are you? Oh, nice hi, to Don. see you. I see you're taking care of the lady. Yes. Yes, all the gentlemen in St. Louis seem to be very good at that. Huh? Oh, oh, uh, uh, yeah, uh, excuse us a minute. Just, uh, just a minute, Dave. <laughs> excuse us. Oh, okay. Hold it, hold it. Shh. We have a little toast coming up. This must be for us. You and Janet. Now, 
When Donald first went to New York, I decided that as his father, I should give him a little sound advice. As he was going to a very lucrative position, I couldn't advise him on how to scrimp and save. I couldn't warn him about the evils of the big city because his friends had introduced him to those years ago. <laughs> so, I decided to concentrate all my advice on the subject of women. <laughs> I said, son, beauty isn't everything in a woman. Brains aren't everything in a woman. Talent isn't everything in a woman. Now, Donald had never paid any attention to me before, and he didn't pay any attention to me then. He went right out and got himself involved with the most beautiful, the brightest, and most talented young lady I have ever met. So, here's a toast to my son, who never paid any attention to his father, proving that he had a lot of good sense. Hold it, hold it, hold it. And to his lovely lady, whom we welcome to our family with much love. Even if you decided to leave me now for Janet, I'd insist on custody of your father. He's a cute little guy, isn't he? Yeah, he's perfect. <laughs> like son, like father. Now, honey, just for the record, you're really not jealous of Janet Booth, are you? Just for the record, I really am. Honey. Oh, Donald, you should be glad I'm jealous. And I always will be, even if there's no reason for me to be. And I know there's no reason for me to be, so perhaps you'll kiss me now. May I come in? Perhaps you won't. Hi. Hi, Mom. Hi. I just wanted to see if there's anything Anne needs before she goes to bed. Oh, no, thank you. Oh, and Mrs. Hollinger, thank you for the party. It was really lovely. Oh, please don't thank me. After all, there's nothing too good for Donald. And you. Well, see you in the morning. Oh, uh, by the way, we're having just a casual evening tomorrow at a local restaurant. Oh, that'll be fine. Thank you. Uh, good night. Uh, good night. Good night, dear. Good night, Mom. Your mother doesn't like me, Donald. Oh, come on, honey. That's silly. It is not silly. She doesn't like me. Women know these things about other women. If she didn't like you, would she have given that party tonight? Of course she would if she gave it to make you happy. She, and she's making plans at a restaurant for tomorrow night. It's easier than cooking. <laughs> honey, what does it matter whether she loves you or she doesn't love you? What does it matter, Donald? She's your mother. No marriage should start off with the mother of the groom hates the bride. Hates? Where did you get hate? She doesn't hate you, honey. She likes you. She probably loves you. And if she doesn't, it doesn't make any difference, honestly. Oh, Donald, it certainly does. And I am definitely going to make it my project before I leave St. Louis. Not only am I going to be a star on stage, but I'm going to be a star future daughter-in-law. And you know how? How? I thought you'd know. <laughs> Next week on That Girl. Good morning. Get out quickly. Oh, I'm sorry. Right, no, honey, she, meant, she meant me, not you. Oh, what chance have I got? <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Let's sit down there. Good morning. Yes, Good sit down, morning. sweetheart. Good morning. We knew you had to go to rehearsal, and we didn't want you to go down there hungry. Oh, don't worry about me. I never eat anything for breakfast. <laughs> I can't believe it. Audrey looked great yesterday. Well, what happened to her? It didn't happen to her. It happened to me. One day before the show's supposed to open, my star comes down with the measles. Hi. Hi, sweetheart. Uh, Stan, I'd like you to meet my fiancé. Honey, this is Stan Musial. Hello. <laughs> Stan, this is Anne Marie. Nice, nice to meet you. Thank you. Stan the man. It's nice to meet you, too. <laughs> the cards. Oh, oh, you're one of Donald's poker-playing buddies. I never had the pleasure, but uh, I used to play a little baseball. She is late, isn't she, Donald? She is only late if she's coming. If she doesn't come, she will not be late. She will simply not be here. Is this what your life is going to be? Married to a chorus girl? 